Once again, uh, welcome everybody. Welcome to our last session. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Just cannot believe at the same time, I'm so happy that this is the last session. <laughs> uh, well, <you're> <laughs> uh, oh, I'm not, I'm not leaving you guys. I'm not deserting you guys. I'll be back. <laughs> right? You have another Bible study you can think of? Oh, uh, we, we may have something like this, like in maybe uh, Advent. <laughs> right? We'll see. We'll see if, if uh, we have good occasion that uh, have for Bible study, then we'll have something else. Right? Every day is a good occasion for Bible <laughs> study, Pastor Peter. Okay. You tell him, Penny. You oh, tell right. him. Penny's back. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, I'll take it as a as a compliment. Okay. Yeah, we have. I have loved this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful. Welcome, Sophia. Welcome. Good to have you here. Okay. Okay. I'll, everybody can hear me, right? Right. Right. Okay. So. Uh, this is the last session, and I hope this uh, could be a grand finale because we are looking at a uh, crucifixion of Jesus, which we cannot miss and shouldn't miss, especially in Luke's gospel because it's so dramatic and symbolic at the same time in Luke's grand vision of the gospel and Luke and Acts. All right, so without, so without further ado, uh, let me uh, open up the slides so that you can jump in right in jump right in okay all right so we are finally here what do you see in the screen okay uh, he's back you're back i'm back i'm i was so surprised oh my goodness i got kicked out Oh, you're the host. You're the host. I'm so happy. That. <laughs> I got kicked out even though I'm the host. <laughs> well, it probably had to happen because you froze. So maybe that had to happen so you could get unfrozen. Okay. There's probably there's probably a, a message in that. Yeah. Sometimes we have to get kicked out okay. so we can start again. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay welcome again guys <laughs> all right so let me uh go back to my uh, powerpoints all right so there's a message so let me start again <laughs> welcome everybody welcome uh to our last session in this lenten bible study our sixth session so we are here what do you see on the screen. Puzzle. 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 What, what puzzle? What piece? The okay. first piece or last piece? The last piece. Last piece. The last, That's piece. Right. The last piece. We need to uh, put that in. So we've been looking at this overview like over and over again. Bulk of the time, uh, four out of six sessions, we were looking at the middle section, Jesus' journey to Jerusalem. And that's... Um, Last week, we were looking at uh, Jesus' arrival. And then today, we will be looking at uh, Jesus' crucifixion, which you see on the right and the center, right center. All right. So actually, the lectionary text that is given to us for this week, for Holy Week, and yeah, for Holy Week, it's basically, uh, it's, two chapters, Luke chapter 22 and chapter 23. And I figure it's like, not gonna, we, we won't be able to cover two chapters in like in short session. So, the, so I chose the crucifixion of Jesus because there Jesus is finally doing what? What do you see on the screen? Fulfilled. Losing his life. He's losing his life. Remember, remember the title? What's the title of this Lenten Bible study? Come lose, lose your life. life. Come lose your life. And he just shows how to lose his life. All right, so without further ado, I invite uh, one person uh, 
Can you please read the text? Starting with 23? Yes, or oh, yes, okay. 26. On the screen. And the entire council took Jesus. Oh, just just on... lead, uh, lead from the screen, please. From the what? The screen. The screen. Oh, okay. as they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, <laughs> who was coming from the country and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. Yes. A great number of the people followed him and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep, do not weep for me but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nurse. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this, when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? <laughs> Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, and they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you were the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, this is the king of Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, Remember when, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he replied, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Pam. Right. So uh, as we do, uh, as, we, we've been, as we've been doing it usual, uh, so how would you summarize this text or image or word? that comes to your mind as you heard? Passing. Excuse me? Well, it's a form of passing. It's ready for death. Right, yes, yes, right. Transition. Yes, transition from this life to the other life, right? Forgiveness, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Right, 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 right. Oh. Yes. Forgiveness, right. Even though he was dying too, right? And he was suffering. Uh, also, also, save yourself. Like, show mm -hmm. show us what you can do. Yeah, right, right. That, that confrontation, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that, that is mockery <clears throat> at the same time. Yeah. It's a rebuke. That was challenging. True. And he he understood what his role was in the story, and um, 
And he accomplished his goal. You mean Jesus, right? Yes, Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's he didn't calm down. <laughs> no, in in one of on one of the scriptures uh, where he was, I think when he was first starting his ministry, and he was extolling people to repent. And he said, for then surely you will, uh, you know, be in paradise. And the, the scripture language around the, um, the, the person on the cross, he didn't exactly repent, uh, but he, he recognized what he did was wrong and he admitted that. And so then Jesus said, you will be in paradise. And I, this, this script, this piece sounds like he means both of them will, but I wonder, you know, <laughs> so re 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 repentance, repentance was, was a, a big part of his message. People needed to say they were sorry. Right, right. Yeah. And then the, 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 the second criminal, he, he repented because mm -hmm. he said, you know, we we are getting what we 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 deserve. Right, mm -hmm. right. He's admitting <coughs> his, his crime and his sin. Right. Mm -hmm. right. What else? But what did that mean? Getting what you deserve when you're in paradise today. So he said to the, another criminal who is mocking Jesus. He said to the another criminal, like, you know, you cannot mark him. We are getting what we deserve. But then this man is, is innocent. He, he doesn't deserve this. So you shouldn't mark him. You, you see? Extreme. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there Yeah, when we uh, delve into that part of this uh, text. Who else? The part about uh, women being blessed who had never given birth and never nursed, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's puzzling. It's like, <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. Oh, yeah. It's, you, are, you are so normal, John. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, so, it's, it's complex. And it's so, without knowing the background, historical background, literary background, it's, like, it's so confusing. So we'll get there. We'll get there. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But I don't want to, I don't want to tell you right now. <laughs> okay. Just let's all go. On. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What else? How, how about when he mentioned about like the hills and the mountains, uh, right. like the end being dry, it kind of reminded me of like climate change, like how we're destroying the mm -hmm. earth. You know? Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. That can be uh, received that way. Yeah. I never thought about it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, text, it, it, it's like in Jewish uh, <coughs> thought, uh, the rabbis say Torah has, Torah meaning it's like the Hebrew Bible, or it's like five books of Moses, but that it, it presents the whole it's like Old Testament. Torah has like thousand face, faces. Torah has thousand faces. The way... The way you look at, the way we, you read and understand the text, it it gives you so much meaning. <laughs> so, <clears throat> all right, that's one way to read it, read and understand this Bible, this text. Good, thank you. What else? Before we move on, you want to see my summary or the image <laughs> that I that came up when I was reading this text. Let me show you. <laughs> Mine is this. Paradise. Paradise. Oh, love it. Yeah, you love it, right? But then, but then, if you really uh, think about what's happening in this text, the paradise uh, that Jesus meant it's not this kind of beautiful place where no one is there, but it means something like this. Mm -hmm. oh. together. together. That's yes. the paradise. So we'll get to that 
uh, as we uh, move on. All right. So verse 26 says, as they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. Do you know this figure? Yes. Right? You heard of him, right? Yes. If, mm -hmm. So how many of you watched The Passion of Christ, that Mel Gibson movie? How many of I you watched it? Oh, years ago. Yeah, years ago. Years okay, ago. So, so Pat, Pat, did, Pat Ham, Hammond, you didn't watch it, right? Okay, so other than, other than Pat, I'd say everybody watched. <laughs> I, I, I can't I watch it. Parts. Okay, okay. Yeah, I understand. I it. It's, it is so... It's so boy, right? It's it's so brutal. Yeah, it's hard yeah, to. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, but then those who watched, do you remember uh, this this the scene where this man comes, shows up, this man appears, he carries the cross, right? Mm -hmm. And then, <coughs> and then after his job is done, remember he looks at Jesus. Remember that scene. And he's not just confused, but the sin to me is like he's getting something. He's getting something. I mean, it's that's mm. that's how I interpreted that that sin. So, and there th th there is reason why I'm saying this. All right. So, do you think? What do you think about him? He's is he is he lucky guy or very unlucky guy? <laughs> what do you think? Lucky. Unlucky. I think lucky. Right? I think lucky. Uh, lucky. Okay. I think in the long run, lucky. Wrong place at the wrong time. Long way, long time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Right. So it looks like he's a very unlucky guy. He was just hanging around, and then the Roman soldier he just grab that guy and then it's like you just carry this cross and you just carry it with no reason right very unlucky guy but he is a model he's a model model of what let's turn to Luke chapter 9 verse 23 which is a famous famous line in the Bible Luke chapter 9 verse 23 then he said to them all <clears throat> if anyone would come after me he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me remember this this line right it's like this is like discipleship 101 right <laughs> it's how to, how to follow jesus you must deny yourself take up your own cross and follow him, follow Jesus, right? That's the discipleship 101. What do you, so what's happening here in, in this text? Crucifixion of Jesus. The Simon of Cyrene, Cyrene, he's doing what? He's taking up. Yeah, becoming a disciple. Yeah, he's taking up the cross. And see the wording in the text. It says, they laid a cross on him and made him carry it where? where? Behind. Behind, Behind Jesus. Mm -hmm. Good. So he's following Jesus. You see? Mm. He's a model of disciple. Period. In this gospel. He's a, he's a true model of uh, uh, disciple. All right. Then verse 27, a great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breast and wailing for him. So question is, what kind of procession do we see here? Morning. morning. Right, morning, right. People following and then beating their breast and wailing. Have you ever seen yeah. something like this before? No. In movies. Movies. Yeah, just in movies, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, grieving. Grieving, right, right, right. So when does this happen? At a funeral. That's right. Good. We have an excellent student here. So this is a funeral scene. I remember when I was little, my um, 
my grandfather passed away, and then people were carrying the coffin, and then there's there is line of people following the coffin, and they are what 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 are they doing? Mourning. They're mourning, right? They are wailing. Mm -hmm. So this is a funeral sin because Jesus is dying. Then verse twenty verse twenty eight. But Jesus turned to them and said, "Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me." Will be for yourselves and for your children. The question is, why? Right? Because it's like Jesus, you are dying, and Jesus says, like, don't, don't cry for me, don't weep for me, well, weep for yourself. Why? He says, for well, the days are surely coming when they will say, blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breast that never nursed. That's this 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 confusing words. What does this mean? Right, and let's turn to Hosea in the Old Testament, Hosea chapter 9, verses 18 16 to 17. Hosea 9. Isaiah what? Hosea. 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 Sixteen through seventeen. Yes. <clears throat> you want it? Yes. Is this it? Uh, Ephraim is blighted. Their roof is withered. They yield no fruit. No fruit. Even if they bear children, I will slay their cherished offspring. My, my, in, my God will reject them because they have not obeyed him. They will be wanderers among the nations. Okay, all right. So, so this, is a, this is about the punishment of Israel. So it's like Assyria will come and destroy mm -hmm. the kingdom of Israel because of their sin. So even though they gave birth, I will kill the cherished offspring of their womb. So when that happens, those who don't have babies, they are they are they are better, right? Because because at least they are not losing their children. They suffer. Right. Yeah. That's why I say that's, like, that's that's hell to watch your child be murdered in front of your eyes, and then you be carried off into captivity to be a slave to be enslaved. That's, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Right. So, do you remember in, in Psalm that, that that brutal line in Psalm? It's like Penny, thank you for that 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 comment because in Psalm there is a line. It says, "Bash their heads." Yeah, bash the heads of their children. You know why? Mm. Because Babylonians they did they did that to the, the shores of Babylonia. Yes. They did that exactly to the Judean people. That's why they were saying, blessed are those who dash their children into the wars. It's, it's, if you know that, if you don't understand, if you don't know mm -hmm. the historical context, it just, it's like, it, we just can't get it. Mm -hmm. Why is there in the Bible? So anyway, right. So that's the background. So that's the background. That's why it says like, Blessed are the barren because you don't have children. You're not going to lose your children because you have none. <laughs> so what happened in Hosea? Assyria came and the kingdom of Israel, they, are, they were destroyed. And then what will happen in Luke's gospel? The temple will be destroyed. The temple will be destroyed. That's why Jesus says, like, oh, don't weep for me. We for yourself because Romans will come and destroy the king, the, the temple, and you guys. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. And this is a very, very confusing text. So we need to look at the text, the pretext. <laughs> All right, so Isaiah chapter 2, verse 19, and somebody else, Hosea 10, 8. 
If you have, have, you have Hosea, uh, Hosea, just read uh, 10 8. Got that. Please. The high places of wickedness will be destroyed. It is the sin of Israel. Thorns and thistles will grow up and cover their altars. Then they will say to the, mount, the mountains, cover us. Mm -hmm. And to the hills, fall on us. Right. Good. Thank you. Right. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 19. Men, <clears throat> men will flee to caves in the rocks and to holes in the ground from dread of the Lord mm. and the splendor of his majesty when he rises to shake the earth. All right. I, I thought it was 19. Yeah, yeah, 219. Okay. That's good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. So that's exactly the text I was looking for. So why do they say so? Fall on us and cover us. What's happening in Isaiah? They're being destroyed. They're being destroyed, right? Mm -hmm. So it's better for mountains to fall and cover them rather than being found by the Lord and being mm -hmm. cut. Mm -hmm. Right? It's, right. it's, the, it's the judgment of the Lord. That's why they are saying, it's like, fall on us and cover us. Because uh, we don't want to confront the Lord, the anger of the Lord, because of the, all the sin and crime we committed against the Lord. 4, verse 31. If they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Do you know, what, do you understand what it means? No. Yeah. yeah, it means no. that <coughs> the, the wood is gonna it's gonna happen more rapidly when the wood is dry mm -hmm. than when it's green. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. it, it'll go into a flame and disintegrate quickly. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. If it's, it's flame, right? Flame. <laughs> yeah. Let me read this. I, I was really I was puzzled too. So let, let me read this. This is from uh NT right. Look for everyone. Jesus wasn't a level leader. He wasn't dry wood, timber ready for burning, like Pat said. On the contrary, he was green wood. His mission was about peace and repentance, about God's reconciling kingdom for Israel and the nations. But he is saying if they are even doing this to him, you know, Jesus was crucified. Do you know who was crucified in, in, in Roman Empire? The level mm -hmm. legal pol political criminal. Right. So I believe most people who were poor and yes, the only way they could survive was to um, be thieves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and those who were <laughs> So those who stood against the Romans, the Romans, they crucified them. So Jesus, the fact that Jesus was crucified, he was a political criminal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. in Romans' point of view. But you know, his message, he was preaching peace and repentance about God's reconciling kingdom for Israel and nations. But he's saying, if they are even doing this to him, what will they do when Jerusalem is filled with young hotheads, firebrands, eager to do anything they can to create violence and mayhem? If the Romans crucify the Prince of Peace, what will they do to genuine warlords? Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus says, you know, this, this is happening when wood is green. <laughs> You know, what will happen when wood is dry? They're gonna come in and kill and kill you all. Yeah. Got it. Now I understand. All right. Okay, let's move on. I hope this is helpful. <laughs> so oh, verse yes. yeah, 32. Two others also who were criminals were led by led away to be put to death with them. So question is. Why two? <laughs> Have you ever thought about this? Why two? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it makes three. 
Make oh, yeah. because it makes three. Right? <laughs> that's right. That's good. And then, so question is, what pattern did we see in Luke so far? Jesus was Jesus. traveling, right? He's entering cities and towns, and he's meeting people. He's encountering people. And what did we see so far in this look in this gospel? He goes to, to a town, he enters a town, and the villagers are they are going, there are two options, right? They are going to accept him, accept him or reject, him. reject him. That's right, that's right. So we have two criminals. So uh, what, what are we going to see? The sure. one, one accepts and one rejects. Exactly. exactly. That's right. That exactly that uh, pattern appears. Right? Hmm. Verse 33. When they came to the place that is called the school, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And you know the school? In Hebrew, it is good. Uh, Gregoret, but in Greek, how it is called? Can you read it? Gorgota. Right, Gorgota. <clears throat> Verse 34, then Jesus said, Father, go forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, right? Do you, you remember this word? Mm -hmm. Word of Jesus on, on the cross, right? Because he's the you know, prince of peace. But at the same time, there is something that we have patient. If you have your Bible, let's turn to uh, chapter 20, Luke chapter 23, verse 34. And tell me what, what you see there. Verse 34. I guess your Bible also has parentheses. Of some sort. Oh. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. You see that? What the and then and then parentheses has something, lowcase alphabet, probably. And it's some it says something there, right? The H? Yes. Yeah. It says other what? ancient authorities lack the sentence than Jesus, what they are doing. Right. I don't understand. You don't understand. <laughs> so it says oh. no. Other ancient authorities lack the sentence. Then he just da 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 what they are doing. Do you do you understand? So it wasn't it wasn't in it, so it's not in some text. This whole that whole section so, is missing. So New Testament, especially, we have many manuscripts, copies of the manuscripts. So original text, we don't have original text. Right. We have copies of original text. So when you compare copies of manuscripts, some manuscripts have this verse, and some other manuscripts, they don't have oh, wow. this part, this verse. So right. it's really up to the leaders to decide. Hmm. And the scholars who, who did their work, they were honest enough to tell us this part is not found everywhere. Somewhere we can find it, somewhere not. It's really up to us to decide. Huh. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you what is there. Okay. Right. Yeah. Or not there. Yeah. Right. Nice. Right. But but in Luke's grand scheme of the the gospel and story, I think it's highly probable that Jesus said this here, especially in this gospel. All right. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And you know why they did this? Because they didn't have a shame. 
It was was woven in one piece. That's right. That's right. I Mary wove it all in one piece. It was very unusual. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. Good point. Right. And if you ripped it, you know, like you rip a knit or something, it would, it would like fray and be useless. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Right. So let's turn to uh, Psalm chapter 22. 18 and verse 1 and 2. Okay. Go ahead. Dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. Mm -hmm. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. Mm -hmm. So this prophecy is fulfilled in Luke's gospel, right? Right. Right. Okay. And then... Let's turn to verse one and two, uh, Psalm twenty-two, verse one and two, and you 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 will know this as soon as you hear. Wow. Please. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. All right. So Jesus says. Like Eli, Eli, Lama, Samak, Daniel, right? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me, right? Wow. In thir- verse 35, and the people stood by watching, but the leader scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one, right? And it's there is echo of scripture there. So we are looking at Psalm chapter 22, right? So verse to uh, verse seven and eight, please. You still have uh, Psalm 22. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. All right. So this particular portion of Luke's gospel, it's heavily depend upon Psalm it's like 22nd, which is like, I think it's like Messiah Psalm in in book of Psalms. Right? Then the question is, he they said he saved others. But in himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. Then the question is, how did he save people in Luke's gospel? By their faith in him. By their faith in him, right. Okay. Good. Good. And those who had faith in him, what happened to them? They, they were, were cured. Healed. They were healed, right? They were healed. Right, right. Right. They were healed. Right. So that's the salvation. Well, look. Verse 36, the soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine. You know why? You know why they offered the sour wine? It has medicine in it. There's medicine there. Okay. Or painkiller. It's painkiller, right? It's a painkiller. It's oh. too painful. You just drink it. It's, yeah. It, that's they, they were they were let least mercy <laughs> that they offered to the criminal, those who are crucified. <clears throat> And verse 37, and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. So once again, the same question, what is salvation? Save yourself if you are the king, if you are the king of the Jews. What is salvation? You know what is salvation in Luke? Can somebody read this? What's what's in it? What's written in the lead? Mm. Please. Oh. Salvation. salvation 
In Luke, Acts means participation in the reign of God. It is a quite, <laughs> it's a broad concept, but think about it. It's salvation in Luke, Acts is participation in the reign of God. Because the central I think central theme of Luke X is the kingdom of God. And you will be surprised how many you how many times you will encounter the word kingdom of God, Basileia in Teu in Greek. You'll you encounter them many, 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 many times in Luke X. Mm -hmm. Right. So the salvation is you join that kingdom of God, meaning the lane of God. We, once you are healed, you are not. No, no longer sinner be, yet because like back then people thought if you are if you are if you have disease that means you had what sin sin A sin right but no more in in God's kingdom that's salvation All right next All right verse thirty seven verse thirty eight there there was also in, an inscription over him this is the king of the Jews. And the question is, why? Well, that was his crime. That was his crime, right? I thought they put your crime over your head. That's right. Good, good, good. That's how Romans saw Jesus, right? So you are the king of the Jews, so save yourself. But is, is Jesus really king? Not in the way they no. wanted king. True. It was not necessarily the king of the Jews. So what do you think? So so we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. But in this, in the last section, you know, last session, we learned that he's the king because, you know, last Sunday, what did we cry out? Hosanna. 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 Blessed is the King. 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 Comes the name king of God. who comes in the name of the Lord, right? He's the king, but he's a very, very different king, king. right? And like that's why I said, crucifixion of Jesus is his enthronement. He really shows what kind of king he is, and we'll get to that soon. Well, you know, Peter, it reminds me of what you said during one of your lessons. The world is upside down. That's right. And Jesus, everything he talked about was upside down. Mm. And, and the king of the Jews, they meant it as ridicule mm. when it was really the truth. The whole, right. the whole thing is upside down. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. It's upside down <laughs> kingdom, right? That's mm -hmm. the kingdom of God. And we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. So verse 39, one of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying are you not the messiah save yourself and us so who question is who does this criminal represent well the the people who think that jesus is an earthly king that's right that's right so what is salvation for him for those kind of people salvation it don't work right you just come down right it's not dying. Salvation is not dying. That's right. It's not dying. It's not dying. Good. Good. Then verse 40 and, 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 that, and verses that follow, but the other, the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of, the, of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. What do you see? Do you see? Do you see repentance here? Mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. the, what the younger son did in in the parable of the prodigal son. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. The repentance. Then he said, "Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom." So. How this criminal's understanding of salvation different oh. from the other thing? Are you losing him? 
Believe in it? Right, right. And? When? 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 Right. 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 And? He accepts him. He accepts him. Good. And? It's a plea, like, like the son begging his father for forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Right, right. It's a plea. Right. Then, I don't deserve it, but please give it to me. Right, 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 right. And then he's he's see he's seeing Jesus now as our earthly king, right? Yeah. Heaven. Heaven. Different right? kingdom. Different kingdom. Right. So here is a kick. How does the criminal call him? How does the king what? How does criminal. The criminal call oh, criminal. him? Jesus? That's right. Do you know what Jesus means? Messiah. Jesus, savior, savior. Same. Same. Yeshua, savior. Yeah. Joshua. Hosanna. Hosanna Just, means that too, right? Uh, Is that Hosanna kind of mean that? I don't think so. No, uh, not the same. No, it's not the same. So, yeah. Doesn't Jesus mean justice in Greek? Jesus means in Hebrew. Jesus in Hebrew is Joshua. Savior. Yeah, Joshua. And Joshua is the compound word, putting two words together. Yahweh yeah. and a Hebrew Hebrew word, which I cannot like, remember. So it's basically Yahweh saves. Yeah. Or the Lord saves. That's Joshua. So this the other criminal is telling Jesus, if you are the Messiah, save yourself and others. And the repentant criminal calls Jesus. Jesus, remember me. Meaning saying, the Lord saves, remember me. So he is yeah. calling him Savior. Yeah, exactly. So he's asking to follow Jesus. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and he says, he replied, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. So what is Jesus doing here? Assuring. Assuring? Mm -hmm. It's assuring. But he's inviting. Forgiving. He's forgiving, right? He's forgiving. Mm -hmm. And then he's, he's inviting. Where? Paradise. To paradise. To paradise. Right? Paradise. Right? Mm -hmm. So what is happening here? What is Jesus doing here? He's healing. He's he is saving. Saving and healing, yeah. Yeah. So they were saying, they were saying, if you are the Messiah, save yourself. Save yourself and save others. And Jesus is doing what? Saving others. He's saving. Mm -hmm. Right? So the king of the Jews, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself and save others. And Jesus is what? Doing what? He's saving. He saved us, saved this, the criminal. Right. That's how. Because he doesn't need saving. Right, right. That's right. That's right. That, that criminal, that criminal definitely deserved the punishment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It does. Mm -hmm. But he's still safe because the criminal repented. repented. Mm -hmm. right? That's the core of Luke's gospel. If you repent, you will be invited to paradise. And then the question is, why paradise suddenly? Mm -hmm. You know what paradise means? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Per, per plus dice. It's para means uh, around. Beside, yeah. Yeah, around. And then dice means world. So word garden is the paradise. So paradise represents what? The first garden. What garden? garden. In the oh, Garden of Eden? Garden of Eden. Oh. 
suddenly you see paradise in Luke's gospel. It's that's the background. So he's inviting him back to mm. the Garden of Eden. Right? Interesting. Right? So remember, remember the lost and the found? The parable mm -hmm. of the prodigal son? Yes. There is right. reason why there is reason why lost and found is repeated many, many times. And let me tell you this. This is like my conclusion after studying Bible many, many for many, many years. There is one theme that summarizes Bible. One word. Repent. What, what is the Bible about? Old and Old Testament, New Testament. What is it about? You know what it's about? It's Repent. Exile. No, it is exile. No. Oh, exile. It is exile. Oh. Oh. It is exile. Think about it. So if you look at Old Testament, what you will see in five, five books of Moses is Exodus. That's right. three. That's really, really important event in Israel's history. And if you look at like prophets, history, you know, Samuel, Kings, every you know, those later writings, they are written in the context of exile. And biblical scholars, they agree that Old Testament are collected, compiled, and edited, became one book during the exile. So, oh. Babylonian exile. So if then you think about it, why Exodus is so important? Because they were in Babylonian exile. That's why they were past their they were past their Exodus experience, slavery in Egypt, and came coming out of the Egypt was so important. So Babylonian exile, slavery in Egypt. It's basically talking about the same thing. You are there, but you lost it. You need to come back. That's why the Garden of Eden story is so critical. It's about exile. Oh, God provided, oh. God provided everything, but you lost it. We you need to come back. Everything. Yeah, that's, that's the Old Testament and New Testament. It's just about Old Testament. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I study New Testament. That's, that's my major. But what is most important in, in the entire Bible is not gospel. It's not gospel. Torah, the five books of Moses, is, is, is the heart of the gospel, heart of the Bible. And what the Bible basically talks about is you know, God provide, God gave you Eden. Mm. Mm -hmm. But because of your sin, you are expelled. You need to return. But you cannot return on your own. That's why you need a savior. That's what the Bible is all about. Wow. That's, this story, this story really, really explains. All right. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a lot. It's a lot to process, a lot to think about. Uh, let me, uh, uh, let's talk about this, this question. Uh, what can, that you, you looked at Jesus' sacrifice, right? And the question we can think about here is how can we live a meaningful life? Question is like, where can we find meaning? Where do you find meaning in life? When you do something, right? Right. As, yeah, when you do something uh, purposely for, uh, when you do something positive or help others, mm -hmm. like uh, like when you're doing something with meaning behind it, then you feel like, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. like there's a purpose, like you have a purpose. Yeah, a purpose. Uh, so, so purpose is found where? 
it's good, very good point. This you got the answer. So in the work you do, the work you do, but then that work is toward or others to, to others, right? Or others, right? If you are do if you are doing it only for yourself, then right. we don't right. really find meaning, right? Right. 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 That's where meaning is found. Mm -hmm. Oh, meaning is found found when we are doing something for others and see what Jesus is doing. He's giving his life for who? Us. Us. For us. For others. Yeah. Everybody that that's comes. Right. After. He's losing his life for others because that's where meaning is found. So the question, another question we may <laughs> think about is then come lose your life. How would you lose your life for Christ? In what in what areas of your life can you, you lose <coughs> your life? Right? No different way to think about it. Right? In what relationships? What Thank area you. of your life? Yeah. I'm thinking lose your life in service of others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By serving others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you have problem with your family members, <laughs> friends, <laughs> right? But those are the areas where we need to lose ourselves to, to, to gain life, life of others in our, in our souls, right? And then what sacrifice would you give to God? <laughs> you do you see what 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 do you see on the screen right now i see poor abraham and poor isaac right mm -hmm. right right remember that story oh yeah. yeah what is that story about sacrifice sacrifice how much you would sacrifice for god mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how far would you go for god mm -hmm. that's like that's good mm -hmm. how far you can go for god right so, so it's sacrifice of Isaac. It's it's in Jewish tradition is the binding of Isaac or binding in in Hebrew they call it akada. It's critical history in a story in in Old Testament. And why is this story so important? Because Abraham, or because yeah. Abraham obeyed? Because Abraham obeyed. But think about the context, right? The okay. story. So when did I when did Abraham get Isaac? Very late in life. Very late in his life, right? When he was how old? 100. Let's see. Yeah. 100. 100 years old, right? Mm -hmm. And how many how many sons Abraham had? <clears throat> what was your question? I, I couldn't how, hear. How many children did he have at the time? Oh, Zero. He had one. He had one. Oh, Isaac. 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 Oh, that's right. That's right. Ishmael. Isaac, right? He had Ishmael. Oh, Ishmael, but he kicked him out. <laughs> God told him to kick him out, right? So at the time, he had only Isaac. Sarah told him. Right. So, you know, I didn't know this before I had Luke. My greatest teacher is Luke Park, my son. He oh. told me it's, 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 it's the ultimate sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. If there's a shooting out there, if you, are, if you are in a mall and it's a shooter shooting, then and you are you have your child, your child, and what would you do? Put my, my you're gonna cover him, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're gonna cover her. You're gonna cover him. You know, heartbeat. No question about it. It's, <clears throat> yeah, it's if you can save him or her, you will do it because you know this. So, God is asking. Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. It's too much, right? He's so cruel, right? <laughs> because it's ultimate sacrifice. 
And the ironic thing is, God is telling him, you do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? You, Abraham, you do it. Can, can any parent do, do that? No, no, right? No. No, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way. You know, whenever I call, I, whenever I grab my son and hug him and, and I, I say one thing to my, to my son, and you know what I say to him? I love you. You are my everything. That's what I'm saying to him. Every time I, I pick him up, hug him, and kiss him, I said, you are my everything. And you understand what I'm saying, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you understand what, I, what I'm saying. So, so let's, let's come back to Luke's gospel, the crucifixion. What is happening here? God is sacrificing his God son. God is sacrificing his son. The ultimate sacrifice. Mm -hmm. the ultimate sacrifice there is no limit there is no limit <laughs> this is a so archetypal archetypal story it's, it's extreme of extreme mm -hmm. God himself giving his one and only son for the sinful humanity that's extreme that's the ultimate sacrifice. And that is what's happening in that story, right? Mm -hmm. For in doing so, it saves the sinful humanity. So I like to look at it as God sacrificed his only begotten son for us, mm -hmm. for his other children. Mm -hmm. Which is just like so humbling mm -hmm. and so big, mm -hmm. so big. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. So I always say, you know, you know what the gospel? gospel if you really think about it, look at, look at it more closely, you will be amazed. If you, are not, if you are not amazed, you don't really know the gospel. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Depth, breath, it's heights, it's unfathomable how deep, how wide, you know, how profound God's love for us, which we found in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. right? So as we uh, close this, uh, section and this session and entire uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Bible study. I will let, let me share a song. Right, let me uh, so let me stop the recording.